Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Tosh Taylor. And I'm Jenna Morton. And today we are diving into one of my favorite things to talk about. We are going to talk about consignment sales and specifically my other life, <laughs> my other business, which I co-own with Carrie Beaumont, who is joining us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So yeah, we are going to talk all things grapevine events today. Yeah. <laughs> I know, this is very exciting. We only do a couple sales a year with grapevine events and so it's like it's very much a like seasonal thing for me it's like oh this means summer is getting closer because it's time for the spring sale mm -hmm. <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> so for anyone who's listening and watching who's like uh, what are you guys on about can you tell people what a consignment sale is and what grapevine events is I'll try. It is always tricky, but basically a consignment sale is like a consignment store, but instead of being like a small shop that's set up all the time, it's much, much, much bigger and it's an event. So it's usually run over one to two type of days. For us, we do a two day event and it is huge. So you think of a normal store footprint is maybe what? 5,000 square feet, that would even probably be a lot. Yeah, that'd be pretty that'd big. That'd be really big, that's a yeah. house. So it would be way, <laughs> a store would be way smaller than that. So 1,000 square feet, we are in a space of 25,000 square feet, and we have over at our current um, event that we had this spring, it has 100 families participating as consigners, we call them, or sellers, and they are there, they aren't even there to be honest, but they participate as sellers to sell their used items and for us it's a kids and baby sale so it's everything to do with kids and babies from newborns to teens and we usually have around 20,000 items um, to sell over a couple of days. Really so. like over within 24 hours. Yeah, yeah everything exactly. is like set up sale right and then yeah. you know we wrap it up exactly so yeah. It's, yeah so like a consignment store much much bigger and an event over a couple of days yeah. so i was gonna ask can you explain more about your guys business and where did the idea come from well the idea is very big in the u.s so um it is very common as a, both a business and as a fundraiser we first heard of, of it because jen and i both have twins if you don't know and um years ago when the local group called Monk to Multiple started up, they wanted to do a fundraiser, and it's a very common fundraiser for twin groups. So um, there was already one happening in Halifax, and one of our founding members um, knew that and touched base with them, and they helped us set up one here in Moncton as a fundraiser. So Jenna and I met through that, um, we're on the organizing committee for that for a long, long time. Many years. Many, many years. And um, to be honest, just loved the idea and loved doing it so much that I one day <laughs> invited her over to my house for coffee and asked yep. her if she wanted to join me on a new one that would be a for-profit one for us to do as a business and take it on the road. So we decided to set up one in St. John. And we did that in 2016. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I think our first sale was 2017. We got rolling in 2016. We had a yes, women, we, we should had do a women's sale. Yeah. Which, you know, may not be gone forever, but it's right now on hiatus. Yes, yes. I know every, <coughs> every time we post anything, people in Moncton are like, oh, is the Moncton women's sale coming back? And we're still on hiatus. Yes. But so glad we can currently just do the one sale in St. John. We do it twice a year, spring and fall. But we learned our, the trade as a fundraiser. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did I oh, explain absolutely. That well? Absolutely. It's confusing. Yeah. 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 But <laughs> it's, a weird, it's a weird business model. It is huge in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Well, you must have gone down to the States to mm -hmm. talk yeah. at these conferences. Yeah, we've gone it. to conferences down there. It's absolutely wonderful. We love the ladies down yes. there. And oh. we have so much fun and we get so many great ideas. And we're hopefully going to get to go back because we <laughs> haven't been able to go because of COVID. So we we're hoping to be able to go back yes. in January. And I, like, I have to yeah. thinking about it. I know. So I just fun. got all like... Because <laughs> so it's... Fun. It was absolutely eye-opening and fascinating to see how big this industry is it's in huge. the U.S. Because in Canada, it's still not that big. No, it's you know, it over the last 10, 12 years, it had started to grow a little bit. Right, but now it's shrunk again it's, because of COVID. Yeah, right. so um, it's really gotten a lot smaller again. So. Yeah, there's. Hmm. Yeah. I know there's one sale in Ontario that's run by a multiples group 
that I think has been going for about 40 years now. Oh, okay. But other than that, there are very few sales in existence in Canada that have been around as long as the Halifax and Moncton one. And now even ours as Grapevine, we're getting up there as like veterans in the industry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Or fogies. Yeah, that's, that, look at my hair, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> also, I have been one of the ones in the background poking for the women's sale to come back. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. It's, yeah. yeah, it's, I mean, one of the big differences and the challenges that we've run into with doing the women's sale is that it's so different than doing mm -hmm. a kids yes. and baby sale, right? Like we did, yeah. when we started it here in Moncton, we did the women's sale. We did a prom and bridal specific sale. Yeah. Then we melded those together. Um, and even then, it was still, it's so different than the kids sale people. You shop so differently right. for yourself True. than right. you do for your kids. It takes so much work to set up the space and to find a space that's the right size for the time and for the number of people and shoppers and everything. It's trickier here well, in the greater Moncton area mm -hmm. than it has been for us in St. John. Right, yeah, spaces are different here. Plus with women's sale, you need changing rooms and mm -hmm. you just don't do the same thing. Uh, families, you need to, your kids grow every single season. You yeah. need to replace all their clothes mm -hmm. and you don't want to do that new. You don't necessarily care as so much about styles. You just need some clothes for daycare or for summer or whatever. And so you literally spend, you buy their entire wardrobe mm -hmm. every season. Yep. Women don't do that. No. So, so it was a struggle. So, yeah. so it may yeah. come back. It may, it'll look, if it ever does, it'll be a little different. Probably yeah. would be like maybe more of a once a year event. But anyways, that's just kind of in my head that sometimes just percolates back there. Yeah. Not ready we, for it yet. Yeah, we usually talk, <laughs> and, and especially like during the pandemic, there was no way that we could pull it off in terms of the right. space that we needed and yes. whatever. Whereas the kids sale that we do in St. John at Exhibition Park, it's this huge big room. There was lots of ability to set things up the way they needed to work safely then. And yeah, we didn't really have to pause on the business. We never, which was we never amazing. paused during COVID in St. John. Yeah. I can't believe we didn't have to pause. It was no, amazing. It, I mean, we certainly um, pause in a way. So if you think back, like we've now been running there since 2017, around 2023, we're on year seven of running sales down there, and we, you know, expected much quicker growth. Mm -hmm. And literally, spring of 2020 was going gangbusters. We were so excited oh, yeah. for that event. And we were probably going to sell out on spaces for sellers. We were just, mm -hmm. it, we were in our group. We, we were excited. Vendors, we had Everything was happening. And yeah. then we, the world gets shut down. We did manage to pull the event off. We did have it in June mm -hmm. when we kind of opened back up here in, in New Brunswick. And so we were able to pull it off. But again, you know, people were nervous. We lost a lot of momentum. And then we literally just kind of like a hamster on a wheel for the last three <laughs> years trying to just keep it going. Mm -hmm. And then um, since, you know, like last fall, it blew up for us. Like yeah. our, it was you know, fantastic. Sales were up like 50%. Like it, we were literally, and we finally are getting where we want to go. So we are super excited about St. John's. So if anyone's listening from St. John, we, yeah. This event is going to be rocking on April 21st and 22nd. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's one of the really fun things, too, about doing it as our own business and being able to do it in the venue that we have there is that we can spread it over two days. So people in the Moncton area that are used to the Moncton multiple sale, that's a one shot. Like it mm -hmm. is yes. that morning. That's it. There's a lot of reasons why it's different for us in St. John. And so we're able to do a ticketed entry on Friday. And what we're doing this time, which is new, brand new this year, um, which kind of came about because of Fiona last time around. Yep. We're always having she, to uh, Yeah, we made it through I know we hate Fiona. that word, but literally that is... Yeah, yeah we were... <laughs> how we were, you survive right now? Yes. We just keep moving as, yeah. as life gets, you know, throws stuff at us. Yeah, but we were in the venue, like, set up for the sale when Fiona hit, which didn't really hit St. John the same as it did but here. we did so, have to adjust. Yeah, and because of that, we've a, kind of played off that this time. So on Friday, people can buy tickets to come in at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, three o'clock and four o'clock correct and then at six o'clock everyone's welcome to come in for free mm -hmm. and on saturday we open at 10 a.m for the public we're open until one and on saturday is discount day so most of the items will have a tag well all the items have tags <laughs> but on the tag if it says discount <clears throat> yes whatever you see is the price is half off so yeah we have i would say we have a good solid hundred or so shoppers who we see both days. Mm -hmm. 100%. They, yes, absolutely. They, they come to get the, to come. you know, the stuff that they really, really want on Friday. Mm -hmm. 
And then it's like, oh, you know what? I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. I'll come back and see what's half price the next yeah. day. Mm -hmm. So it's a really fun event. We just, it's, um, we've made so many connections in St. John, which, you know, yeah. we started we started this. I mean, we really didn't know very many people. Not oh, my goodness. At all. No, we were asking friends of friends to introduce us to people because. So that was the hardest part about yeah. this business for yeah. us to start. Like, we'd love to go other locales and stuff, but it's so hard to start from scratch when you don't live in the community. So that was a struggle for us. And that's mm. why it did take till like 2019, 2020 for us to really get our feet under us. Then the pandemic happened. But now we have a fantastic team. So if anyone's mm. listening, I'm sure you are because we're going to share it. And you're yes. going to see this. <laughs> we um, <laughs> have you. been growing this event and you like our team down there is amazing. They are so loyal. They you know, share yeah. about us all the time. They're the reason that we're where we are. Oh, yeah. So 100 percent. That is what makes or breaks this business in any city, really. Oh, yeah. Is the team and the loyalty that comes with people, especially to what I find so fascinating is you know, obviously there's an age where your kid's stuff is going to be the driver. Like that's, you know, when, when your kids are little, you can make money on these events mm -hmm. and you can save money. As your kids right. get a bit older, usually what you're making goes down a little bit. Yes. But the friendships and, you know, the atmosphere that you, that we've helped create with oh. the team and yes. with the business, people keep coming back, even though I'm like, they're barely selling. Some of them don't even sell. They yeah. start off as sellers and then just become volunteers, right? It's it's such a, it's so fascinating to watch because it's such a fun social group. Right. And so just if you don't know how these events work, these events work, basically, you know, Jen and I are like, the, we own the business and then all of our sellers join us. They get a certain commission percentage for what they sell and, but they can get higher commission set percentage if they help out at the event. So that's normally how, you know, that's who our staff is. Our team mm -hmm. is um, usually our, mostly our sellers, but those people also get to shop very first as part of our team shopping night on Thursday night. And so we do get um, a few people that just come to get that. You can, anyone can join us as a worker or team member to get that perk of shopping early. Mm -hmm. But what's so great is that you, create this bond between all these people and so they all like met there and they, everyone's having a great time and they I get messages like when we open the sign up for them to grab their shifts then they're all messaging me it's like well I normally work all this day and that's my day off for my kids and I look forward to this can you can you make us can you add another shift so I can get in here and so <laughs> they have their ones that they like and they want to yep. oh my friend is working this shift I really like to work with her because we, we'd work really well on checkout together or whatever and so we just kind of adjust and go and it's been amazing. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's so fun to watch those relationships like form. Like you said, we've been there for seven years now. You've seen these friendships grow. And then you start to see the kids <laughs> grow with the sale. Yes. Oh my goodness. In the fall, the family that came up and their little girl was in the stroller. And I'm like, yes, I do. Like they came up specifically, like, do you remember us? I'm like, yes, I remember helping you try to pick out like I know. what infant things you should buy while you were pregnant because you it was your right. first baby and oh, you had wow. all these yeah. questions and yeah. now is this little kid who is like toddling around <laughs> and picking out her own things yeah. and then there was a comment on the page the other day on oh, social yeah, media yeah. i had shared it in one of the buy sell trade groups and there was a woman commented she's like oh i'm so excited my son is 10 and we've been going to your sales since you started and he was just asking me when the grapevine sale is <laughs> I'm like, a 10-year-old boy. That's yes. interesting. I don't know if my we kids know what my business is called. <laughs> <laughs> That's the day when he gets the bag full of clothes. Yeah, yeah. and the toys. Yeah. He probably gets to pick yeah. up some toys. Yeah. Because we do toys, books, clothes. Baby equipment. Baby equipment. Um, dressers. Yeah. Cribs. We even have some home decor we have now. Some home decor. I'm um, just a little insider yeah. tip. There's going to be lots of home decor. They moved. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and, and if by chance you can't come in the spring, in the fall sale, there's usually a lot of Christmas and Halloween stuff. Yeah, that exactly. goes like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, it's always so much fun. But yeah, it is anything that you would need, like from pregnancy until your kids are teenagers, and it, it gets a little bit harder. Well, yes, to... there's still lots of there's still lots there as they yes. get older, but it's just that, that your children, you know. To, they get more particular. They, they, yeah. yeah, they get particular, or, yeah. and they're wearing their clothes longer, so they, run, they wear out. They wear I, out. Yeah, yeah that's, for sure. I'm noticing that now as my it's kids different. are, you yeah, know, yeah. hitting ten, and I'm like, oh wait, you can wear these until they don't, you know, yes, yeah. so you know, your dog just shoot yeah. out so fast yeah. that you exactly. just outgrown it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, 
Let's talk a little bit more about being a seller, though. And okay. You did say you're full for this sale. We, uh, but... Well, right now there are two spots okay. that have opened up. Okay. Just so you know, there <laughs> are two, that, that so important. they can always reach out. Yeah. Um, we're hoping yeah. to fill those. They're still over, uh, well, just about a month to go, so mm -hmm. there's still lots of yeah. time. Um, so you want to know like, what, what they have to do? Exactly. Like, okay. What's the steps that a seller needs right. to take? So they would reach out to us and I would connect, I would explain there's actually two ways you can sell with us. What we call our traditional sellers versus our busy mom sellers. Mm. So traditional sellers, you do a lot more work. So the whole idea, the reason we can pull off the event in like a day or two is that everything, all the stuff arrives at the venue ready to go. So you as a seller price everything yourself. Mm -hmm. We have an online system. Um, you go online, you create your own tags, your price tags from there. We give you instructions on how to do that. That's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. And then you print them out on cardstock and it prints like eight to a page, cut them up, and then you would place them on all your items and attach them. Um, all clothing needs to be hung on hangers, so that's what helps our mm -hmm. be so shoppable. So while yes. sometimes that's a bit of an investment to get the hangers, it is so great because you sell way more stuff because everything's hung up nicely on racks. Um, we do, we will be doing a couple hanger pickup events, so don't let that stop you because we have a ton of hangers that we can give away for free. So that's kind of really like specific. But so you do all that, you drop it off to us the day before the sale. And then uh, we organize the whole sale like a department store. So that's important for shoppers to mm -hmm. know. It's not mm -hmm. a multifamily yard sale. It is all by size and gender and category and really yeah. easy to shop. And um, you only go through one checkout. So instead of having to like go to multiple people and check out, you check, go through one checkout. We have, I would take debit and cash. Let's mm -hmm. come. I'm, I'm going yeah, sideways. That's fine. That's go fine. back to the sellers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can pay so, cash, you can pay debit. Right. And then the sellers, um, so they drop off their staff. We set it up for the you know the few days that we're open. Um, we sell, 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 and then it's up to them whether they want to come back for what doesn't sell, or we can donate it mm -hmm. on their behalf, um, so they don't have to come back. And then within a week or two, they will get a check in the mail for their proceeds, which can be anywhere between sixty-five percent to eighty percent, depending on how much they want to work at the sale itself. So, the mm -hmm. busy mom option, which is really great, and a lot of our new, some of our new ones like to try this method out mm -hmm. first, and then they often switch over once they understand the process better. Mm -hmm. um, is basically you earn a l little bit lower of a commission. You start at forty percent because all you have to do is make sure your clothes are or your items are clean, organized, and uh, kind of. You put them in boxes and you drop them off to one of our experienced taggers, and they do the tagging part for you. So you don't need supplies, you don't need to print, you That's don't amazing. need hangers. Yeah. And, and they so, drop it off. They bring it to drop off. Yeah, and too. even the seller, the, yeah. the tagger will drop it off. So once you drop it off at your tagger's house, you are done. You don't have to do anything yeah. else. That's amazing. So yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's, um, so we do have a couple of spots left right now because we had a few people cancel. So um, yeah, we're at 98 out of 100 sellers. So. That's crazy. So And we'll continue to grow that. So that's the goal mm -hmm. is to grow that to around 300 eventually. Um, Holy so moly. yeah, so yeah. we'll do it slow because we don't like to um, bite off more than we can chew. So yeah. and uh, so yeah. we'll we'll I, I we've done a hundred for the last couple sales. So in the fall yeah. we'll probably go up uh, maybe around one hundred twenty. We'll kind of yeah. inch up a bit slowly. Yeah, you can't jump too quickly because you need to have enough shoppers coming in mm -hmm. as well, right? So yeah. we, we want to protect our sellers. So our seller, mm -hmm. just so the reason they do it with us, it's so easy. Like, like even if you do the tagging yourself, it's still easier like oh, watching yes. a movie and tagging or yeah. watching your favorite show you're binging or whatever it is. And you do it at home. And then our average seller now gets a check around $350 after yes. the sale. Like, yeah. So I mean, that's our average. Like mm -hmm. we have sellers that make over a thousand, like thousand dollars. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, so we've had specifically in St. John with Grapevine, we've had families fund their trips to Florida for yeah. cheerleading competitions. We've had another right. family pay for flights for four of them to go to England for a vacation. Wow. Right. Yeah. It's, it is like, so yeah, not only do you get yeah. stuff out of your house, but you actually make good money doing it. And I mean, yeah. I think last sale, I think our top 10, I think everyone had sold over a thousand dollars of stuff. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, I think it was the first time the whole top ten was over a thousand. Was at our last sale. Wow. Um, but like you said, like the average yeah. is three hundred. So even like even right. me now with my kids are older, especially if I'm busy and I don't get yeah. to all the toys and books and the things that I still have, mm -hmm. I still make a couple hundred dollars. I still kind of see it as breaking even mm -hmm. in terms of how much I spend for my kids' wardrobe for yeah. a season versus yeah. what I pick up there. And the goal for our sellers, the ones that really use our sale the way it should be used, is that they sell everything and then they buy everything and they yeah. basically break even. Yeah, so then exactly. basically you're, you're, you, want, you, you just 
it's not costing you anything to outfit your clothes every season, mm-hmm. outfit your kids every season. Mm-hmm. Like that's the whole goal, which is yeah. huge now. Like the oh, what the, the prices are there? Women, it's it's even more important, and and to be able to find things too, right? Like yes. that's what we've been noticing lately. I I find anyways, we're having more and more people who are coming because they're having trouble finding things mm-hmm. elsewhere, mm-hmm. and coming to our sale is a great starting point because, like we said, you've got a hundred family stuff worth to choose from but it's all laid out like a store and no one's there to haggle with. Like right. y- you right. don't see the person who's selling it. So a lot of people like it's, I am not a yard sale kind of person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just want to see a price tag and I want to know if I want to pay that for it. Right. Yep. And that's what shopping a consignment sale like this gives you that opportunity. Well, yeah. And I mean, like, you know, we had to adjust. So we, if um, for people that are listening that understand this business and understand the sales, like in Moncton, um, they've had to adjust as well since the pandemic. They've gone to a few different times of ticketed sales. And we've had to, with the popularity of these sales, is to spread the shoppers out so that you can have a much more leisurely, mm. enjoyable shopping experience. And that was forced on us. Like, we had to go to that model as soon as COVID hit because we needed to limit how many people were in the building. And then what we saw was people spent more money because yeah. they didn't feel like they had to rush to get in line to pay yes. and they enjoyed and they enjoyed so their self shopping and then plus we were able to help them more um mm-hmm. put stuff in a hold for them you know all this stuff so yeah. then they could Keep shop the longer tidier. yeah and so we mm-hmm. found that you know the average purchase that the each shopper was doing was much higher they were loving it more so we now will not go back to a fully just open at yeah. whatever time model because the lineup forms and it's not yeah. enjoyable and this is just amazing and our shoppers absolutely love it so mm-hmm. yeah and i think that's the biggest one is you know even if you could put up with shopping with a crowd in the yeah. racks when you go to get in line to pay that's when the, the pain really hits yes if, if we've had a big flood of people mm-hmm. right so keeping these ticketed hourly entries really makes a big difference for your shopping experience in getting in line because we will run what usually six cashiers we run, at the yeah peak? we run six checkouts at our yeah. event um the monk to multiple sale well they That's run right. um 10 checkouts um 10 to 12 i think they're maybe going up to 14 because there's just such a crazy event yeah. there so you know i definitely want to put a plug in that events this weekend um, here in Moncton, if you're yeah, listening. April 1st. Yeah, yeah, April 1st. Not a joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, they've had tickets on sale for a while. Um, it, they, I know they were getting close to being sold on their tickets, mm-hmm. but they still do have free entry. Yes. Um, so yep. definitely check them out because mm. it, it's a fantastic Moncton event. And then um, watch, uh, our tickets are on sale now. Yep. And you can check us out. And we're um, just, you know, about an hour and a half away in St. John. So yeah, we uh, have well, a lot of loyal Moncton shoppers who come well, down. Well, that, that was before yeah. we well, sure. Yeah, to we wrap have to, up, but yeah. if I was a seller in Moncton and I'm willing to drive my stuff to St. John, yeah, you can. That, yeah, when fine. we have spots, absolutely. Okay. So you can so, do selling, yeah. shopping, you can do both events. Yeah. We do have people that do that. Um, we use the same system, so it works really well to go between the events. Right, um, yeah, exactly. There's one little thing I just wanted to say was that just how much I love doing this is because it helps every, like it helps so mm-hmm. many families. I don't think mm-hmm. people understand, even in like, you know, in Moncton here, it's a fundraiser for their Moncton Multiples group and Grapevine. You know, this is a way that we've been able to have our little, you know, business on the side and support our families. But then it's also like it helps all those sellers. It helps all those shoppers. We get to make donations. We yeah. get, you know, all the things that like it just, it just keeps going in the whole community. And yeah. that's why it's such a rewarding um, little thing that we do. Absolutely. I agree. So. Yep. Socials? Yes, yeah, okay. you can find us on Facebook and Instagram under Grapevine Consignment and Grapevine Events St. John. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, Moncton Multiples, you can look them up. Moncton Sale, MM Sale, yeah. they are happening April 1st. We are happening in St. John April 21st and 22nd. And all the links to all the tickets and all the information, everything is in the show notes. So just uh, click that button and you will get all the information you need. Perfect. Carrie, thanks for coming in. Oh, no problem. It's fun. We'll see you next time.